live from Kenneth Field of Valley Stadium, Stony Brook football action on 90.1 FM WSB. The Stony Brook Seawolves will host the New Hampshire Wildcats tonight. Jim Fortune alongside me, Zach Wilson and Ken Furman. And last week, Stony Brook, they had a really tough test against the James Madison Dukes. Game had to go into overtime and snap the 12 game home winning streak for the Seawolves in a 48, 45 to 38 loss. But now New Hampshire comes into Canopy Laval Stadium and they've won their last three games. Second and nine from the 15, 525 remains. Score remains nothing, nothing here at Canopy Laval Stadium. Brosmer awaits the snap. Washington Jr. in a tailback and it's a play action fake and in for the touchdown. And that was Justice Woods Malone. That was Brian Espinet making the touchdown pass. 6-0 Wildcats, 5-16 remaining for that. Well, he's their leading receiver when it comes to scoring. His third touchdown of the season and a good one on that on the cross. Just piece of the defender. He's able to catch the slant inside and head strong into the end zone for the touchdown. Brian Espinette doing it, the due diligence for the Wildcats. And they're on the board first with 5-16 remaining. Second and 14 from the 15. Fields, Lawton, Trent, Anderson, and Constant. Here is... Fields over the middle to the field. Constance got the 15-yard score. His fifth touchdown of the year, and the Seawolves are on the board. It's 7-6 with exactly 14 minutes left to go. A beautiful slant pattern from Constant, and we saw the same exact play last week against James Madison. First and 10, eagle eye formation with Carlos Washington in at tailback. Going in motion, Charles Briscoe the third. Here is a play action fake. Here is Brosmer looking for Briscoe on the run, and he makes the catch into Stony Brook territory, across the seam, inside the Stony Brook 30. A big play for Brosmer to start off this second half, and it's with a bang on a 35-yard completion. So second and nine from the 30. Washington remains in that tailback. Brosmer. Going bootleg to his right, looking for his receiver, making the catch. Briscoe the third again, and it's inside the Stony Brook 15, around the 13, a gain of 17 on the play. Briscoe the third, making two big catches so far in this second half, and New Hampshire is really capitalizing, and they're only about 12 yards away from the end zone. So here's Hughes for a 23-yard field goal. It's up and good for the Wildcats. So didn't want to get the expectation that they had for a touchdown, but they've got three points. Fields will drop back, not much. Looking for Trent, far side. Trent makes the catch. Did he get one foot in bounds? He did, and I'll be in New Hampshire territory at the 38. A solid play for the Seals, a 32-yard gain. First and 10 from New Hampshire's 38. Now it's time for Stony Brook to see if they can capitalize. Play action fake, looking for Constant, and it's intercepted! And that was an interception made. Evan Horn making the play. And he is known for his pick sixes. And he makes Ty Kelfield's play on an interception. Looking for Gene Constant on the slant route towards the center of the field. And New Hampshire will take over at their own 30. Shotgun formation with Lawton in the backfield with Fields. Fields, he'll give it to Lawton. Lawton trying to find a seam. He goes through, stays on his feet towards the right sideline, near sideline, out of bounds at the 45. A gain of 20 on the play for the Staten Island native. And he is over 85 yards rushing tonight. So shotgun formation, here's Fields. He'll drop back again, looking near side. Anderson's open, he makes the catch, and he's just shy of the end zone around the two yard line. A 39 yard Completion there from Fields to Anderson, and Stony Brook is working into New Hampshire territory around the goal line. This play is screaming inside handoff to Tyson Lawton. Ball at the one, shotgun formation. Here is Fields, give it to Lawton, and Lawton's in. The first rushing touchdown of the night for the Seawolves. It's a one yard score, his sixth touchdown of the season, and it's 13-10 Seawolves with 5-11 left to go in the third quarter. Here on third down. Let's Here see is Brosmer with Lauby. Brosmer seeing the pressure. He's got to get rid of the ball. It's sacked and it's a fumble, and Stony Brooks got it. A big strip there. It looked like Sean Hammonds Jr. was there on the fumble on the fumble and making the recovery. 
can't really see who got it. We'll wait for the replay, but it looked like McKee Smith got was there first on the ball. Here is the play action. Here's on the bootleg. Fields has to get rid of it, and another turnover on downs. Getting two fields on the pressure. Michael Balsamo, after coming off an injury, one of the captains for UNH, and the second consecutive fourth down con uh, attempt is a turnover on down for the Seabulls with 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. So third and nine from the 28. Rosberg oh, looking for it quickly. He's looking for Helm. Helm's got it, and more. he'll get the sticks. A big gain on the play to the 43 yard line. Gain a 15 on the play, and New Hampshire converts on a big third down in the fourth quarter. Big play here for the Wildcats. They need to get to the six. They're at the 20. Here is Brosmer dropping back, looking for the end zone to his right far side, making the catch. Brian Espinet, and it is a touchdown. His second touchdown of the night. Espinet, far side in the end zone, and makes the snag for the Wildcats. They retake the lead, 16 to 14 with 9:32. Brian Espinet, what a catch! And the clock is ticking, but a big defensive stop there for the Sea Wolves. But here's Hughes. Hughes for the kick. It's up, and it is good. Just hits inside the right upright, and it's 20 to 14. New Hampshire with 5.07 left to go. Hughes will kick this out towards Constant. He'll get it around the seven. Here's Constant, breaks the move. He's towards the left sideline, stays on his feet, makes the move, miss. He's down the sideline. He's going to go the distance. He needs one man to beat around the five, and he's going to cut down around the five. Gene Constant, so dangerous. And he will not score, but he's around the five. Spoke a little too soon. And making the tackle, saving it, was Samir Blacknall for New Hampshire. Constant gets a return of about eight, 89 yards. So are they saying there was a fumble on that play? Because new, what are they saying? So what is the player? New Hampshire is celebrating on the sidelines. I don't know what the case may be. What is the review here? as we wait to see what's going on. We're looking at the monitor over here, and I don't see, I don't see what the problem is. Ricky Santos is going crazy on the sidelines, my, smacking his fist in the my, air. My only guess is that they think uh, Constant was down a lot earlier, because I remember uh, as he started off the drive, as he was trying to shake off the defender, he did look like I don't he know. was didn't, low. I, I don't think his, he was down. I mean, yeah, he's obviously down there. I don't see anything to reason as to, I don't think it's a matter of him losing the ball. It's a matter of the spot of the Was ball. he down here? I don't see anything yet. No. I, no I see he used indicate. his hand. He didn't even use his forearm because if he uses his forearm down, he is considered down. But his hand does not consider him down. He kept yeah. his balance. And Very good athleticism and agility. A lot of control by Gene Constant. After I don't really see what hand. the issue is here. For the Stony Brook Seawolves. For the fans that sitting at home, that happened at the Stony Brook 20 yard line or so. so New Hampshire's convinced that it was down. Wow! Oh my Please goodness! The game clock to 504. What a break for the New Hampshire Wildcats. And from with the re replay, I am outraged on that call. And Chuck Priori does not like the call. And. It looked like he definitely kept his hand above from his knee, was able to maneuver across one of the most dangerous tacklers on the team on special teams, and that was only Manzik. But here is Tyson Lawton towards the left side, and he is towards the right side. He'll get out to the 40. And that was a gain of 18 on the play for Tyson Lawton. He is well over 100 yards on the night. And this is pretty much not the game. Seals have all their timeouts, and... I don't think it's a question to use this timeout here. They got to go for it. They need to run it here. I would not run it here in this situation. Here's Fields. He will drop back in the pocket. He's got Constant and it's overthrown. Wow, tough break for, from Fields and Stony Brook. They Unbelievable. really should have that one. And he had Constant open towards the sideline. Fields just could not make the pass. Yeah. They had to run it. 250, 256 had remains. Yeah, it was just on target. Maybe Constant lost his footing, and he was open towards the sideline. And the Seabulls, 0-3 now on fourth downs so far tonight. 
33 seconds remain. One more kneel down, and this will do it. Yep, tough loss by Stony Brook. They had options. They had plenty of chances to convert. They should have done a lot better with the possessions they had and risking their chances and on a fourth down. that will do it. That's the last snap. And New Hampshire storms really like they just won a championship game. And they will win here in Kenneth P. Laval Stadium. They will advance to 4-2. and two. Stony Brook loses their third game, their second in a row. And it's a final 20 to 14 in favor of the New Hampshire Wildcats. Wildcat, Wildcats stay undefeated in conference play with that huge victory riding their wave of momentum. So we'll say goodbye here from Kennepi Laval Stadium. Stony Brook falls to New Hampshire Wildcats 20 to 14. Jim Furchland, Zach Wilson, Ken Furman, and Stony Brook won't play until their week two on November 9th when they play Towson home at Kennedy Laval State. But November 2nd, they will head to Villanova to possibly avenge back-to-back -back losses and play one of the hottest teams in the FCS and CAA. But once again, Jim Furchwin, Zach Wilson, Ken Furman, Stony Brook Falls to New Hampshire 20-14. to Hope you guys have a great weekend and enjoy it because Stony Brook will not play football next week. We hope you guys have a great sports week.